celebrating the unsung heroes of rugged and reliable electronics. You know the ones. The components that make it so you can pressure wash your design. The components that help you shut off a high-voltage subsystem in an emergency. And the components that don't break down in a hot second in a windswept dust storm. Yeah, I'm talking about the battery disconnects, the e-stops, and even those push buttons. I see you, and I appreciate you. Maybe we should get them some kind of high-voltage cake. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Jog Talk. Rugged and reliable designs today have a specific set of design requirements that may not be found in other industries, including robustness, durability, the ability to resist harsh environments, and yes, the ability to be pressure washed. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Mark Dixon from TE Connectivity introduces us to the Kissling product family, which includes a wide variety of rugged and reliable solutions for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks, Mila. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're talking about Kissling products for rugged and reliable solutions today. But Mark, what kind of conditions are we really talking about here? Mila, what we're talking about are conditions such as temperature, humidity, sand, dust, shock, and vibration. In the extremes of these conditions, however, Kissling focus on was often driven by our customer demand. Take, for example, temperature. Typically, with our off-the-shelf products, we cover a large range from negative 40 to 85 degrees Celsius or negative 40 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Shock and vibration are also conditions that may not be easily categorized in a range like temperature, but the demands we put on our products meet many military standards which exceed industry standards regarding dust, sand, humidity, water, and ingression. Most of our products are IP67 as well as 6K, 9K, which means not only are they dust tight, they are able to be immersed in up to a meter of water for 30 minutes, but also means that they're protected against high-powered water jet sprays in any direction. Okay, so Mark, within those conditions, what kind of applications are we looking at here? The applications vary from customers who buy the product that are using them. Our customer base is very broad. Industry, construction, transportation, and a rapid-growing e-mobility market, are just to name a few. Some applications that would be harvesting machines where a lot of dust and dirt are flying around to prevent dust ingression are also needed. Street pavers and other construction equipment where high temperature and high vibration is also experienced would be another example. One application that applies to almost all customers, even if they are from different industries, is withstanding pressure washing. The vehicles in these harsh conditions are typically cleaned via pressure washing. Our products stand up to this. So Mark, each of these applications present us with a unique set of requirements, right? That's right. Not every customer has the same problem, and even the same customer may not have the same problem all the time. Since Kissling has several different products, we have specific solutions for each. Take our low voltage battery disconnects, for example. They are rated not just to carry the current and voltage, but also to switch under load. Our relays, we offer monostable, bistable, single coil, and double coil options to cover driving requirements that for the financial criteria, load carrying, or energy consumption. Kissling's solution to products like e-stops or push buttons are IP67 sealed by themselves without requiring any other components unlike some of our competitors. A challenge that several industries have been experiencing is a trend for high-voltage vehicles. And the solutions for growing market, Kissling has been able to make high-voltage product for some of these product lines. So, Mark, let's get into that first issue you mentioned, battery disconnects. What are we really looking at here? What we're really looking at here, Amelia, is not just a battery disconnect ability to withstand outside influences, but also its ability to handle electrical needs, especially its ability to switch. Kissling low voltage battery disconnects are able to switch under load. Under load means while the system is, or vehicle has power applied. This means that the user can switch the disconnect off up to the voltage value listed on the data sheets without damage to the disconnect, and more importantly, knowing that the disconnect will shut the system off. This is important because it offers a safety fact to the system that disconnects that only carry does not. When I say carry, what I mean is that a disconnect can only carry voltage or current over it. It can only be switched when the power is not on 
or applied to the system or the vehicle is already off. I can't emphasize how important this could be in an emergency. Kissling low voltage disconnects can also do this in all amperage values we have. Our low voltage disconnects are available in 200 amp, 300 amp, 400 and 500 amp versions. Kissling has another feature that few if any competitors would offer, and that is battery disconnects with auxiliary contacts. These disconnects have the cable with a Deutsch connector. It allows to keep the IP67 rating that the other disconnects have, but these disconnects have something with auxiliary contacts that normal disconnects don't. That is the ability to shut off a subsystem separately since it's not connected to directly to the main terminals. This could be used, for example, to shut off a cab of a semi-truck or something that runs off a lower amperage and needs to be separated from the main system to some degree. Okay, so what about the relays you mentioned? What kind of details do we need to be aware of here? I think the first thing that you need to be aware of is what are your needs of a relay? Not all solutions require an advanced type of relay. It might have, for the most part, just to fit the amperage and voltage requirements of a system. For something like this or something that energy consumption is not a primary concern, I would recommend a monostable relay like our 29 series. They tend to cause less than a bistable relay if cost is your driving factor. If energy consumption or as a byproduct, heat emission is a concern, I would recommend a bistable relay like a Kissling 26, 30, or 31 series. But it's important to understand the difference between a monostable and a bistable relay. A relay is called a monostable when its contacts return automatically to the starting position after the input voltage is disconnected, or in short, it only remains switched as long as voltage is applied. A bistable relay, the contacts remain in the last switch position after the input voltage is disconnected, or in short, the relay remains in the new switch position after the voltage is removed. So what this means is that a monostable relay will consume more energy since the voltage has to be applied the entire time is being used to switch state. The bistable relay only needing this voltage applied for the switching state and will consume less energy. A little more to this, Kissling bistable relays have two coils instead of one and also use a coil economizer. A coil economizer allows a relay to use a high powered coil during the in pull or the switch in part of the energizing of the relay and a lower powered coil to hold the contacts in place. Here we see, for example, an initial high power use for the pull in of the coil but which is quickly goes away to have a lower power consumption afterwards. The single coil use here in orange, which are used in modesty relays, much more than double. Okay, so you mentioned e-stops earlier. Can you explain that a bit more? Sure, an e-stop or an emergency stop is a safety switch that allows a user to shut down the system or vehicle instantly when activated. Kissling e-stops are a few things that set them apart from our competitors. The first thing that comes to mind is our e-stops are not only IP67 rated, but they are IP67 rated as a standalone unit. What I mean with this is that although several of our competitors may offer to be IP67 rated as well, they can only achieve this by placing the e-stop in a separate box or housing. These housings have their own separate costs. They require not only tools to disassemble, but also place the e-stop within them and reassemble. This is also labor intensive and therefore costly to do these steps. Also, if the housing gets damaged, the IP67 rating for the e-stop gets lost. With a Kissling e-stop, all the customer needs to do is attach their existing wire harness to the matching connector, and they're finished. If a customer is not sure where they need to put an e-stop in their system or their vehicle, it's not a problem either. Kissling e-stops are available in cables ranging from several inches to several feet. The cabling of the e-stop is done with a hot melt process, that not only provides a clean look, but it also helps strengthen the connection between cable and e-stop. The cable versions exit in both 90 and 180 degree cable exits. This helps against possible placement problems and directionality issues. Since the cabled e-stops come in different Deutsch connector options, customers can use the e-stop without having to reconfigure the wiring hardens they already use. Finally, Kissing offers e-stops with available with a backlit so they can be seen where they need to be seen and actuation protection cages to help protect against unintentional activation of the e-stop. Okay, now push buttons also come into play here as well, right, Mark? That's right. Since our push buttons have the same base build as our e-stops, many of the same things apply. Same sealed IP rating, cabled versions with Deutsch connections available, and backlit as well. A couple of differences do exist. The push buttons are available both in a flange mount version or a center mount version. The e-stops are only available in a center mount version. Also with push buttons, 
Due to the request, there are several more types of images available on the push button than with an e-stop. Okay, so Mark, if I'm working on a design that demands a high voltage, what considerations should I be looking at? One needs to consider here what the system actually needs for its nominal use, both for amperage and voltage. Typically, when we're using 80 volts or above, we're already classified as high voltage. What the customer really needs to know besides their nominal use are things like overload current, which is a current greater than the relay is designed to carry, and how long to do this. The other system demand questions that need to be asked by the customer are the make and break values, as well as emergency make and break values. These are the values which the relay can make contact to switch on and break contact to switch off. These values are scaled by a constant current as the voltage increases, the endurance or cycles decreases. For the emergency make and break, this would be the minimum value that the relay can make, and more importantly, break contact at least one time in case they need to switch the system down. For the physical design, the decision making is easy since these relays can be used as part of a power distribution enclosure or the standalone unit. Only the physical dimensions are, need to be considered. Okay, so Mark, when it comes to high voltage designs, battery disconnects can also cause big issues, right? What kind of solution should we be looking at for this issue? Yeah, that's right. For one, high voltage systems have clearly the potential to be life threatening. A big threat for the switch is to switch properly in a high voltage environment is arcing. This happens when there is an electrical discharge through the air between two points. Arcing can cause contact welding and cause the switch to be welded shut. This can be eliminated through blowout magnets or spacing the contacts further from each other. But at the high voltage values that are needed, and especially for the space constraints of the EV market, this is not an option. Kissling High Voltage Battery Disconnects uses a high voltage battery interlock system, or HVIL, which closes the main contacts of the switch before closing the auxiliary contacts when going from an off position to an on position, and then opens the auxiliary contacts before going from the main contacts when switching from an on position to an off position. The auxiliary contacts are connected to the high voltage relays, which does the actual heavy lifting, and shuts the system off. This design allows users and systems to remain safe, keeps a small footprint in a market where space is premium, and ensures the long life of the switch. Okay, Mark, this has been quite a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Sure. Kissling offers reliable, rugged components and parts for all your needs, be it industry, agricultural, transportation, electric vehicle market, aviation, or anything that I have may not mention we should have a product for you. Besides the project I mentioned, please check out our website at te.com and look up Kissing to see what may be your solution. Excellent. Well, Mark, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia, for having me. The pleasure was all mine. I hope that your users have learned something about Kissing, and I look forward to one day of speaking to you again. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.